for our group after the cattle have completed the breeding work in order to achieve efficient reproductive management, a current pregnancy diagnosis should be carried out in time and is a well-described method for bovine pregnancy diagnosis. Animals that are usually used for this technique include sheep, goats, horse, company animals, and other domestic animal species. But for those captive deer species, including fallow deer, red deer, Hokkaido sika deer, and reindeer, this image modality has also been identified as a valuable tool for pregnancy detection and fetal age estimation in several species of capital survey. Ultrasound is sometimes more accurate than other pregnancy detection mechanisms such as several progesterone or pregnant association glycoprotein analysis in many cases. Ultrasound visualization of the reproductive tract can provide more information about fetal viability, gestation, age, and identify development abnormality. In the meantime, the approach should be applicable to other species with active breeding program. For the war particle for part A, we have two relative objectives. The first one is the technique of using trans-abdominal ultrasounds to detect pregnancy and uh, monitor the developing fetus. The other one is to understand how to view and interpret the productive tract including the uterus and the ovaries in non-pregnant and pregnant deer. For the objective of Part B, to assess the reproductive and stress behaviors of Zimba deer in captive environment using Esagrim. In this pregnancy diagnosis using transabdominal ultrasound on deer, there are 3% that restrain the deer, while the 4% were holding the transabdominal ultrasound. The examination of this practical is conducted in a shaded location, which is the dark room, to reduce effects of extreme weather, especially during high noon, and to minimize the stress of the deer. Per the person that restrains the deer need to elevate the head, neck, and thorax slightly to reduce the risk to facilitate proper ventilation during the procedure as the abdominal ultrasound is performed while the deer is in standing position. If necessary, clip hair from the area of the abdomen to be examined in order to achieve adequate contact between the footprint of the transducer and the skin. Lastly, position the ultrasound unit in a location that allows the technician to easily visualize the monitor while conducting the examination with his or her dominant hand. Input animal identification information like name, identification, number, and etc. into the system to automatically level step image and video loops. As we obtain fatal image, we need to measure them. To measure, we start with SCRF, which locate the uterus on the monitor and make fine adjustment to the position of the transducer until a second view of the entire fetus is obtained. And then freeze the image and measure the distance between the most dorsal aspect of the skull and the base of the sacrum. And then to measure CD, obtain a second view of the fetus which the same image we used to measure SCRL and measure the distance between the dorsal and ventral aspects of the thorax. To measure HL, using the same surgical view of the fetus as described for the SCRL and CD measurement, measure the distance from the occipital crest to the best nose. To calculate fetal heart rate, identify the heart within the thoracic cavity of the fetus by visualizing its rhythmical contraction. Calculate the heart rate by counting the number of contractions that occur within a one minute period. Verify that all set image and video loops include all necessary identifying information including animal name or number, death, measurements and appropriate structure levels. For ectogram behavior observation, a strategic location was located 
in order to observe the whole paddock of deer. Clothes that are not eye-catching or distracting were required to be wear. Then, from the observational post, the area needed to be scanned from left to right at every one minute interval. Every behavior needed to be observed and recorded the frequency of the behavior. Each observation slot lasts for 10 minutes and with 5 minutes interval break between each slot. From our observation, the most behavior that can be observed was lookout behavior followed by alarm behavior. Lack of mating related behavior could be explained because of the mating season for the deer had already passed. Although we are unable to observe any other behavior, especially regarding mating behavior, but thanks to Dr. Hisham courtesy, we are able to observe how standing mounting behavior con is conducted in deer through this video. Apart from standing mounting behavior, we could also observe follow behavior and look up behavior. In conclusion from this practical trip, we get to accurately remember the correct way to do transabdominal ultrasound on years and how to correctly do the pregnancy diagnosis on them. Other than the hands-on, we got to observe and assess the reproductive and stress behavior of somebody in captivity which will surely enrich our experience for the future use.